Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, their locations and drops inside of the Alteric Mountains. This is quite a varied zone and there's a lot of different rares in a lot of different places and there's 8 rares in this zone in total. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Jimmy the Bleeder So our first mob in the Alteric Mountains is Jimmy the Bleeder, a level 23 humanoid that hangs around on either Curran's Dagger or Saphira's Nays. This guy, I was really tempted to actually include him in the Hillsbrand Foothill rare video because he's actually, like as a level 23, he's really low compared to what you'd expect for Alteric Mountains and he is right on the border between the two zones. However, he is technically classed as being an Alteric and if you kill him, he will drop a random green of the appropriate level. Nothing else, I'm afraid. Cranky Benj Up next we have Cranky Benj, a level 32 turtle that hangs around on the misty shore. You can easily pick this guy out because he's the only turtle that kind of has like a blue reddish colour. And he's also a neutral mob as well, so if you want to get close and take some pictures with him, uh, by all means, because the turtles in World of Warcraft are absolutely adorable. There's not really anything special about this guy at all. I did kind of get him hit to hit me a few times to see if he did anything, um, you know, special at all. He just seems to have a little bit of health. As a, as a turtle, he's going to have a lot of armor, um, which is why they also make quite good tanking pets for hunters. But aside from that, nothing special at all. Uh, if you kill this guy, he will just give you a random green of the appropriate level. There's nothing unique on him, although obviously you may get some clan meat or something like that. This guy has a slightly longer than average respawn time of around about 20 hours or so. Araga Up next we have Araga, a level 35 lion that prowls around at the top of Gavin's Naze. Gavin's Naze is pretty much full of lions, you will note Araga by his mane and what I also found out which is quite interesting is a striped tail. I had a quick look and I couldn't actually find any other lions that have a striped tail on this model so it may be that Araga is a unique model and I didn't know that so if, it's, uh, if you're a hunter and that is actually, if that is true then he's definitely worth picking up as a unique pet. What isn't very unique though is his loot. It's pretty disappointing, a random chance to drop a green of the appropriate level. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. He also has a respawn time of about 12 hours or so. Gravis Slipknot Up next we have Gravis Slipknot, a level 36 human that roams around Stralbrad. You can probably guess what he is a reference to, um, yeah, who says that Blizzard don't do pop culture references, so yeah. But uh, anyway, there's nothing really special about this guy at all, he's obviously very menacing and bold looking and he looks like he probably wants to fight you, but aside from that, nothing particularly special. One thing to note is he's actually one of the few mobs that doesn't have stealth in Stralbrad, so he's and he's also got a quite a unique model as well. He's pretty easy to find. Normally you will find him over to the kind of little old orchard on the left of the actual town, but occasionally he will go in and roam around the area. If you kill him, he will just give you a random green of the appropriate level, nothing very special at all about him. One thing to note though, if you are in this area for quests or whatnot, please do consider checking out the nearby buildings because normally there's about two or three chests. It depends on if people have been nearby, but there's always some sort of chest or something in one of the side buildings, so it's always worth checking out. Scowl Up next we have Scowl, a level 36 yeti that hangs around nearby the Growler's Cave. The Growler's Cave is of course where you do the quest on Horde to get Hecular's Revenge. There isn't, I believe, an alliance equivalent of that, 
but nevertheless if you go up near to Gavin's Naze or Corrin's Dagger in between there there's a little path that leads up and this cave is kind of like on your way to the ruins of Alterac and then kind of off to the side. This guy is really easy to find because he's obviously dark grey and none of the other yetis in the area are. However, I will just say this, he has quite a lot of health, so if you are looking to take him out solo, just be aware, he hits kind of like a normal yeti, I haven't really seen him do anything other than kind of knock you down, so it's not too bad, because um, his damage isn't crazy big, but yeah, he does have a lot of health, so just bear that in mind, you may not be able to solo him. This guy is actually quite well known as one of the rares in Alteric Mountains, primarily because he actually drops a rare, well he has a chance to drop a rare weapon, a 60% chance to drop the feathered headdress, and a 25% chance to drop the Howling Blade. Obviously it's the Howling Blade that people would prefer to get because it has resale value, however the Feathered Headdress is not bad at all. If you're looking to kill this guy he's on around about a 12 hour respawn timer as well. Stone Fury Next up we have Stone Fury, a level 37 elemental that roams around on the road up between the Western Plaguelands and Chillwind Point. Stone Fury is quite cool, he's actually possibly my favourite looking elemental in the game. I haven't actually seen a model that is like that really cool blue colour, so it's yeah, it's just really awesome to see. He's not particularly strong, he doesn't have a crazy amount of health, he has some uh, elemental resistance, so like schools of magic and stuff like that, you're not going to do as much damage. And he does also have a knockdown. Aside from that, pretty easy to kill. If you do kill him, he will just drop a random green of the appropriate level, nothing special about him at all. His respawn timer is around about 20 hours, so I think it's going to just be a case of if he's there, kill him, and if he isn't, well, doesn't really matter. Low Grosh. Up next we have Low Grosh, a level 39 ogre that lives in one of the caves in Crushridge Hold. It's the cave that is the most left if you come down the Slaughter Hollow from Strombrad. Um, there's a couple of other ones but this one is the, the deepest and obviously he's kind of in the depths of this. The guy is not too hard to kill and he's quite easy to make out as he's the only one that's wearing red. I think he's probably the only one that's also not armed as well so he's pretty easy to make out. He's not really too far into the uh, thing as well. He is, I think he's a fire mage because he has a fire ward of some sorts but um, yeah he doesn't really tend to cast a lot of spells. He's not really that difficult to kill just generally. If you can kill him uh, you have a 40% chance to get the boulder pads, a 40% chance to get the pacifier and a 20% chance to get the black ogre kickers all of these are really good items obviously the pacifier is the best you can sell that for a fair bit on the auction house he has a respawn time of about 20 hours uh, because of his loot i would definitely just go looking for this guy anyway if you're in the area as both the kickers and the pacifier sell for a lot of money narilla sands And last but not least, we have Narilla Sands, a level 44 elite red dragon that roams around literally the entire zone of the Alteric Mountains. The problem with this is, is that he's quite hard to find, so you are going to have to do a bit of searching to find him, but this guy is considered a bit of a challenge in Classic WoW, and it's kind of a rite of passage for every player to at least try and kill him once uh, during their kind of early days in the game. This guy, yeah, because he's a right of passage, he is insanely difficult. He's a 44 elite, but he has an absolute crap ton of health and he hits really, really hard. As you can see that I got absolutely pummeled as a level 60 mage, mind you, against the 44 elite. I read a comment a while back about a guy who was comparing it to some Burning Crusade mobs, and he says he has about the same health as a level 68 elite mob from Burning Crusade has a fire damage spell that does a fair bit, I think it's about 300 fire damage. He's immune to all slow and impair effects. He's also immune to fire damage as well. So if you're a fire mage, you've just got uh, you know no chance at all. As you can see here, I literally had to pull all the stops out to try and kill this guy and you know, just, just like a case of trying to get away and stuff. It's just such a pain in the ass because you cannot slow him down. There are some classes that can obviously solo this guy much better. 
I think Majors is probably it's a poor class to do it with. I think you'd struggle with Shaman. Druid might have a bit of luck. I think any class that has a bit of armor you may do a little bit better on. But overall, he's very, very difficult. This is why this guy is pretty famous for killing low-level players, as because he roams around the entire zone, people do not expect a level 44 elite dragon to creep up behind them and one-shot them. So, yeah. But, you know, at some point in your World of Warcraft classic career, you're going to have to encounter this guy and fight him because it is a bit of a bragging right. He's on a pretty low respawn timer of about 12 hours, so, you know, you're not really going to have too much trouble finding this guy if he has been killed or at least waiting a little bit. The real disappointment is though, he doesn't really drop anything decent. He will have a chance to drop a random green that is obviously of quite considerably higher level than what you're used to in Ultrak Mountains here, he dropped a level 40 glove. He also has a chance to drop some rares of about the same level, although it's not a guaranteed rare. So overall he doesn't actually have any unique loot, but this guy is definitely worth killing because he's just it's just a fun challenge of it. If you can solo him, kudos to you. As is the case with all new rare videos now that I do, here is a map of all of the rares mapped onto the Alterac Mountains, as you can see, quite a varied set of locations. If you want to reference this at a later point, there is a link in the description below. And that about wraps up all 8 rares, their locations and drops inside of the Alterac Mountains. Overall, the zone is alright. So I don't like the fact that some of the mobs just kind of drop random greens, however the other ones that drop rares more than make up for it. It's a bit of a mixed bag really, it depends if you're looking for something specific or not. I really like the fact that Nerilla Sands is in this zone, I love the fact that there's a mob just roaming around the whole entire zone, and to have it as such a difficult thing as well that it actually becomes really well known as kind of this like rite of passage for players, it's just a really cool little bit of World of Warcraft culture and history that you know you don't tend to get with other zones. If you enjoyed the video, please do let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more in the future, subscribe to the channel.